In this video, we are looking at function notation. A function can be thought of as a machine that assigns one output to each input. Here we have the function, read f of x equals 3x plus 4. The f itself is the name of the function. The x tells what number to plug into the function. The 3x plus 4 is the actual function itself. And the f of x means the output of the function f when the input is x. We also call this y, so aka or also known as y. In this video, you might want to pause several times to make sure you have everything written down. Okay, on the front we have two examples of function machines. First we'll deal with f of 2. f of 2 says put 2 as my input. The function is 3x plus 4. And then when we evaluate 3x plus 4, replacing the x with a 2, we get 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4 is 10. So the function evaluated at 2 is equal to 10. On the other one, f of negative 1. The function 3x plus 4 is being evaluated for negative 1. Negative 1 is our input. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So 1 here is our output. So what we have here is that f of negative 1 is equal to 1. On the inside, we have 8 examples. I'm going to do these basically by hand. So what we've done here is we have this function up here, f f of x equals x squared plus 3, and that's what we're going to use for the first example. We first make our skeleton. So x is being squared, so the parentheses is being squared. This tells us what goes inside our parentheses, so we put the 4 here. So f of 4 is equal to 4 squared plus 3. 4 squared plus 3 is 19, so f of 4 is equal to 19. For number 2, we're looking at the function for g. The g of x function is negative x plus 1. The negative sign stays outside the parentheses because the parentheses is just replacing the actual x. And then inside, we put the 0.5 in each place. And then we just do negative 0.5 plus 1, do that arithmetic, and we're going to get positive 0.5. We have done the same thing for the others on this page. So here we have f of negative 2 equals negative 2 squared because x is negative 2 and it goes inside the parentheses because the parentheses basically represents the x. The x is being squared, so the parentheses is being squared. So negative 2 squared plus 3, and that gives us 7. For g of 0, again, the parentheses represent the x. This negative is in front of the x. Back up here, the negative is in front of the x, so the negative is in front of the parentheses. And the number that we put in there, whether it's positive, negative, or zero, goes inside, and it is different than this here. This tells us what to do with it. So here we end up with zero plus one being one. So here we have g of one half. So g of 1 half actually ended up being just like number 2, except in number 2 we ended up with a 0.5, where here we're putting it in fraction form. Now number 6 required some effort on our part with the calculator because we're squaring a fraction. We are evaluating the function f at 2 thirds. So here we have to square the 2 thirds and then add 3. So what we're going to do there is we're going to open our parentheses. We're going to use alpha y equals to be able to put in our fraction of 2 thirds. Make sure to arrow out of the fraction and then close the parentheses. After that, we can square that and then add 3. And then that tells us that in simplified form, this is 31 over 9. So that's where we got this right here. We used the calculator to help us do that um, arithmetic. Now in 7 and 8, you don't have just a function that you're trying to evaluate, but you have to evaluate the function, and then after you have that number, do something else to it. So what I'm going to do here is just take the g of 8 part 
and evaluate it. So g of 8 is equal to the opposite of x plus 1, so negative 8 plus 1, which gives us negative 7. So this piece right here is negative 7, and then we're going to add 2 to it. Negative 7 plus 2 is 5. Oh, sorry, negative 5. For number 8, we are evaluating the function f at negative 3, and then we're going to subtract 4. So we're going to take the function for f, which was x squared plus 3. Evaluate it at negative 3. So I'm going to take the calculator, do negative 3, square it, plus 3. So this is what it looks like in your calculator. Hit enter and we get a 12. So we know that the value of the function at negative 3 is 12. So now I'm going to replace this f of negative 3 right here in the original problem with a 12, keep my subtract 4, and 12 minus 4 is 8. Okay, on the next page, it says what is the range of the function f of x equals 1 half x minus 1 when the domain is negative 4.5, 8, and 12? So what I'm going to do here, let me go ahead and completely clear the calculator. We're going to go to y equals and have the calculator help us. I need to enter in the function. So I'm going to do alpha y equals to get my skeleton for the fraction. So we have 1 half times x minus 1. At this point, I could just go ahead and look at the table of values. And from there, I could figure out what 8 is. And I can figure out what 12 is by just looking at the table of values. When the x value is 8, my y value or function value is 3. When x is 12, my function value is 5. However, I need a negative 4.5. So I come up here to the negatives, and it goes from negative 4 to negative 5. I don't have a negative 4.5. So I need to change a few things about the calculator to let me find that out. So where I'm going to go is second window. So I do second window. And I'm going to go down here to the independent, which is your x, and I'm going to say, ask me what my x value is. So now I go back to the table, and all of that stuff is gone because I haven't asked it anything yet. I want to ask negative 4.5. If x is negative 4.5, what is 1 half x minus 1? And it tells me negative 3.25. So our first range value is going to be negative 3.25. And while we found those other two numbers a moment ago in the, um, in the table, I'm going to go ahead and redo those here. See, we still end up with a 3, and our 12 should give us a 5, and it does. So there is our range when the domain is negative 4.5, 8, and 12. So number 10 is very similar. It wants to know what the range of the function is when the domain is negative 3, 3, and 6.1. So I'm going to go back to y equals, and I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to type in x squared plus 3. So here's my variable key. I'm going to square that and then say plus 3. And then um, for just a moment, I'm going to go back here and turn this back on to auto because I want to um, show you again how to do that. So let's go ahead and look at the table. It gives me all kinds of stuff. But I want to go ahead and type just these values in so I don't have to scroll around. So remember, you go to second window, go to where it says independent, hit ask. Then go to your table, and there's nothing there. So we're going to type in negative 3, 3, and then 6.1. So our, dom our range now is... 12, and we only have to put it once, and then 40.21. So that is our range for this function. For 11 and 12, we no longer need the calculator. What we're doing now is using a table or a graph to find our function values instead of the calculator. So here is a table that they've given us, or a part of a table, and they want to know what the value of the function is when x is 8. So if this is our x value, we're going to go up here to x, and we're going to find where x is 8. Here's where x is 8. So what is the y value? 
it is 3. So that is how easy that is to find from a table. Just go to where the x value is, look over at the f of x or the y, and that tells you your value for the function. When we um, put this into the gridable, you don't have to put a plus sign. You can if you want, but you don't have to put a plus sign there. But you do need to do, uh, put the 3 here, and you do need to fill in the circle. If you do not fill in the circle, you will not get credit for that whenever um, the documents are graded because the computer grades them and it doesn't see what you wrote down. It sees this little circle. Okay, for number 12, we are going to use the graph to find f of negative 4. So I go to the um, x value of negative 4 and I follow it down until it hits the graph. And then I look at the y value of this point, which is also negative 4. I can do the same thing for f of negative 2. What is the y value when x is negative 2? So I go to where x is negative 2 and it happens to be on the graph already. The y value along there is 0. I could also do f of positive 2. So I go over here to where x is 2 and I go all the way up here. I say, well, what is that y value? Well, that y value is 8. So as long as I am on the graph itself, all I need is the y value of that ordered pair. So this is our function notation notes. Please make sure that you run the video back or watch it multiple times if you need to.